Hi and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Mariah. I'm a culinary student and pastry chef. Today I will be answering your most frequently asked questions about culinary school and working as a chef. Starting off with the one I probably get asked the most. I get this question asked at least five times a day on every one of my videos. What is the name of the culinary school that I go to? So the culinary school I go to is called the Institute of Tourism Studies, which is ITS in short. It is here in Malta, in Loa, which is the city the airport is located in. What schools do I recommend? Personally, I've only ever been to one school, which is mine, so I can't really recommend any other schools. That is up to you to do your own research and just compare and see what works best for you. How much does it cost? So this really depends on the type of school you're going to, but I'll be answering for my school. By the way, I am in no way a representative or an ambassador for the school. I'm just a student who films content. I am so grateful that for my case, I get to go to culinary school for free. This is because where I'm from, most tertiary education centers and schools are free for local citizens. Fortunately, if you are an international student and you are coming from outside of Europe, you will have to pay. All the prices are listed on the ITS website for each year, each semester, each course, and I will leave a link down below to where you guys can see all of the prices. What books do we use at the culinary school? So being completely honest, I'm in my fourth year. We don't really use books anymore. We just use recipes we find ourselves or the ones our lectures give us. But before that, during my first year and second year, which is certificate and diploma, we used specifically three books. The first one we used at the beginning of first year was called Practical Cookery 13th Edition. It is a British based cooking book. If you literally want to learn the most basic techniques, then yeah, go for it. Moving on to second year, we used that same book. And then we also had a book called something patisserie. I believe here is a photo. We use this book religiously for pastry. It's pretty nice. I do recommend it, but it's hella expensive. I literally just went to the library and scanned all of the pages and I just made like a digital folder on my phone. Is it scary? Honestly speaking, no. You do not have to be scared. I was scared my first time too and I can remember how stressful it is because you want everything to be perfect and you're so anxious, like what's going to happen? Who am I going to be with? What do I have to bring? That is exactly why I film my videos. I actually have a few videos about what you need when you're starting culinary school, which I will link up here, somewhere here. I always get this wrong, I don't know why. But yeah, I have a video explaining everything you need. I also have a video explaining what I keep in my toolbox for work and school. And yeah, you can check those out if you would like to know that. Is it hard? No. Well, at first, Obviously, when you go up each course each year, it will slightly get a little bit more difficult in terms of assignments. But other than that, it's not it's not hard at all. If it is your passion and it is what you are meant to do, it is what you want to do, then trust me, it will not be hard, especially in the first like two or three years. It's a breeze, honestly. Now, how can you get into my specific culinary school that I go to? And are there any entrance exams? So I'm going to speak about what applies for me and for local citizens. For international students, there is actually an updated list on their website, which I will link down below. It's called the Prospectus, which is basically a book of all the courses the school offers and all the qualifications slash exams you need to enter. But back in my day, around 2019, you needed to have at least five O-levels or GCSEs uh, I believe two of them with a grade five or better, and then three of them with a grade three or higher, or the other way around. And you needed to have English, whatever native language you speak, hospitality or home economics, and the other two didn't really matter. Those were the requirements that were needed for me to enter at the time. Since then, they've changed a ton. So with these exams, you can get into certificate level, which is the first year. But if you do not have those exams, you can still get into the school, except you'll have to take up an extra year, also known as foundation level, where they teach you all of the very basics regarding the entire hospitality industry. So you have the kitchen, you have service, you have housekeeping, literally anything that revolves around hospitality. What languages are we taught in at school? So if we are a group of all multi-speaking students, then the teachers will switch from Maltese and English. 
but if there is at least one person who does not speak Maltese, then the teachers will switch to completely speaking to English. And also all of our written work and tests are all done in English. What age do you have to be to enter the culinary school I go to as well as is there an age limit? So you can be as young as 16, fresh out of secondary school, right after your exams. And there is no age limit. You can, at least that is what I know, to get into my school. So if you are older than the age of 23, you are considered a mature student. So A, you won't need to do your entrance exams and B, you can still join the school. Basically, there is no age limit. I believe the oldest person in my class when I was 16, he was around 29, but for other courses, there are much older people and it's not a big deal, honestly. I get so many comments of people asking me if it's too late because they're a certain age. No, it's not. It truly isn't too late. If it's what you want to do, then do it. Can anyone join? Yes, that is one of the reasons that I actually love about my school. Anyone can join. If you have any sort of impairment or you are physically or mentally disabled, they will assign a care or LSC to constantly care for you, guide you, assess you and help you in whatever you need, of course, if you are comfortable. And yeah, that is one of the reasons why my school is amazing. I feel like in my recent Q&A video, I was talking a little bit negatively about the school, but I feel like nothing is perfect in life and I have to be honest because Everything has good and bad things, so might as well mention them. Is it worth it? This answer will be different depending on who you ask. Everyone will give you a different answer on this, but in my opinion, in my honest opinion, yes. And there are so many people I know and have met that will tell you that it's not worth it simply because they enter the school and then they drop out after a year because it's never what they wanted. They just force themselves to you know, continue school for some whatever reason and then they decide they want to drop out and start working. And then they'll tell you that my school is crap. But it just, it depends who you ask. Don't take it to heart. You know, at the end of the day, it's what you really want, then do it, but I think it's worth it. Which leads me to the next question. Do you need culinary school to become a chef? No, you don't. You don't need culinary school to become a chef. But if you have the privilege to go to culinary school and you are financially well enough to do it, then by all means, do it. I highly recommend it. It's so fun. You meet so many amazing people. You get so many opportunities, whether it's job opportunities, competitions, flying out of the country, exposure. It's so much fun and I highly recommend it. I wouldn't have changed a thing. Do you have to memorize recipes? No, you don't. You don't need to memorize any sort of recipe. I highly recommend whenever you start culinary school or a job as a chef to always bring a blank notebook with you where you can keep all of your recipes or a folder in case the teachers give you recipes. But no, I've never had a case where you have to memorize recipes before. It's just stupid. It's honestly not a safe bet either because you're more prone to messing up the recipe and that leads to waste and, you know, loss of money. But I've had this thing where I've done a recipe so many times at work that I unintentionally started memorizing it. So yeah. How much of what you learn in culinary school is actually applied and used in real life? From the perspective of the kitchen, quite a lot actually. You learn how to work on your own as well as in a team mainly, which is something I struggled with a lot personally. We're, sometimes we're alone, sometimes we're in pairs or in groups. And then from the theoretical side, I honestly felt like I learned a lot. Uh, we have things like marketing and accounting related to our profession, such as we have this thing called personal kitchen management, where we learn how to formulate rosters, menus, what all the different kinds of menus, when they're used, how to use them, how to use like, how to utilize recipe cards, how to calculate costs from the suppliers, stuff like that. Passips, first aid. I have learned a lot. You can still learn these things without culinary school, but like I said, I'm privileged enough to go to culinary school, so I'm really grateful I did. And for my last question, what do I think is better, a diploma or a bachelor's degree in culinary arts? It honestly depends on you, on what kind of level you want. If you want a very basic level and understanding, get the diploma, and then if you actually want a degree, then go for the degree. 
if you choose either or, you can still get a job as a chef. Even without them, you can still get a job as a chef. I've heard people mention that outside of my country, like in other countries, you actually need a degree to become a head chef. Whereas in my country, it really is not the case. In my country, you don't need any sort of degree or diploma to become a chef. I've known people that have started out as dishwashers and worked their way up to head chefs. Technically speaking, for my country, for my experience, I've never needed any sort of diploma or degree to work as a chef. But if you want to just to get a basic understanding, then yeah, do it. And yeah, I think that was it. I have finally answered all the questions I've been getting for the past few months, I believe. Sorry it took so long, but I just feel like with these videos there is a lot of repetition, so people might not watch them. But hopefully like this you guys have an updated version. But still be sure to check out my previous question and answer videos, because I do answer certain things differently, etc. So yeah, with that being said, that was my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to keep up with what I do in my personal life, I have an Instagram and I also have a TikTok. And for those of you who do not have TikTok, I am actually posting my TikToks as my YouTube shorts. So if you guys could go watch those, it would mean a lot to me because I actually make revenue from those, unlike TikTok where Maltese creators don't make a single coin. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting me. You are the reason why I am doing this and I'm so grateful for you guys. I will see you soon for another video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Bye guys.